morning it's another beautiful spring day in the mountains i hope it is feeling beautiful with you too welcome welcome i hope you've rolled out your mats and i hope you have some props with you i should probably have mentioned as much as you can find maybe two blocks two tupperware boxes maybe a cushion maybe even a towel to use as a strap because we want to really feel like we're going to support ourselves in our practice um, we're really uh meeting the spring energies right now which uh, no surprise we've had earth day just a few days ago we moved into taurus realms which really brings us to the earthiness of springs so we've appreciated all this upward rising energy we've come to meet with that and charlotte sam packed this morning thanks hi charlotte hi sam um sorry i missed my flow um so yeah so now we're bringing ourselves to earth so we really want to feel opportunities to get our feet in the dirt feet in the ground barefoot fingers in the dirt and start to really kind of come home to uh with an earthy sense our bodies so the solid matter that materializes around us we really start to appreciate nature the earth and our nature our body flesh bones but also that energy running through it so new moon new vibes we're going to roll through a similar practice as to what we've been doing but perhaps with a little bit more intention on you feeling your practice in your body and adapting where you need to so you have a really good feel of arriving in your body the experience of being in your body in your yoga so we're going to actually start with uh a sensory practice, a sensory meditation, we call it Kundalini shaking meditation. So we're going to start on the mat. The people, sorry, Colin was trying to tell me that people are arriving and people are, are, are coming to join us. So we have Sam Patton Smith. Good morning. Elodie. Elodie. Chloe, bonjour. Julie, Marcel. Julia. Hi, Jules. Hi Chloe. Okay, well I hope you have a sense of fun about you today because we're going to start with a little bit of fun or certainly stimulation. But I want you to feel stimulation. I'll keep my jumper on actually. It's a bit cold. Stimulation uh, from an energetic sense. I really want you to tune inwards. Nelly. Nelly, good morning. So we're going to start standing on the mat. We have practiced our mountain meditation where we're standing in a stream. We're perhaps going to start in a similar shape from that, but we're going to be start, we're going to shake it out. So we want to feel like we're shaking through the whole body, drawing the vibrations of the earth upwards, drawing it all the way up through the trunk of the body. So we're going to be a tree today. We've got our roots, our legs, we're going to shake them out, shaking through the trunk of the tree and all the way through the branches. So maybe Colin, you can help us out so that we can feel a bit, little bit less awkward. Maybe Colin can cue some music. Come on, DJ. Shake your feet, tap your feet, your heels on the ground. Really feel the vibrations coming up. You might want to close your eyes. Feel the vibration, feel the heaviness of your pelvis. Hang the pelvis, just let it go. Start to maybe lift the arms, shake the hands. Shake the arms. You can't do this wrong. If you're just looking at me like I'm some kind of crazy, please join in. Feels good. No one's joining in. <laughs> shake the hands, shake the elbows, shake the shoulders, feel your joints. Feel through the back. Maybe you're moving the spine. Don't stop moving your feet. Close the eyes. Once you feel like you've accessed a few places in the body, just shake. energy rising from feet through legs 
the whole torso, arms, stop laughing, Colin. It's Friday, come on guys, focus. At the head go. Check the left leg. to a mountain pose. Find a stillness. Sense the earth beneath your feet. And really focus on steady inner breath and feeling arriving in your body. And that rush, energetic movements and vibration You've just arrived in your body, perhaps you're in an avatar, you just arrived in this body, how would you feel? What would you feel? Feel grounded through the legs, pretty steady through your trunk. And a strong and fluid breath. So if you're practicing Ujjaya breath, breath with sound, the control point at the throat, just under the collarbones, then activate your Ujjaya. That's going to be your support through this practice. The next time you exhale, you might bend the legs, scoop back of the hands to back of hands, round back. Inhale as you Take a little back bend, pulling the arms back. So a little bit of a cat cow. Keep your legs together. Exhale round. Inhale to arch. Drawing the tailbone down. You can support. Exhale. Reach. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Just one more. Fluid arm motion. And then come back to center. Step forward with the right foot. Move into the left toes and reach up. So take this nice full bladder stretch. Maybe take another breath here, pushing forward and up. Exhale, coming back to the center. Left foot comes over, really press into the right toes, crossing the body and lifting. Real front of the body, side of the body stretch. Coming back to center. And inhaling as you rise through the arms, Exhaling as you just ripple down. Keeping the knees really soft, letting the head go. You can widen your feet. I'm taking my jumper because I, I built up some heat there. Oh, and I'm hanging out here, feeling into the legs, feeling into the stability through the feet. So a lot of foundation stuff today. Really sensing that support through the ground and really feeling strongly connected to the brown support, whatever that is, feet, arms, or back. Work yourself down onto your hands and knees, we're on our all fours, and just take whatever movement feels good in your all fours, cat cows, barrel rolls, circles, child's pose, you choose your practice. Let the body cue you as to what you need to do to feel good in your spine. We're just freeing off the back body. 
whatever feels good. Try not to lose your Ujjaya connection. Really connect to what you're pressing into at the ground. Making whatever freeing movements through the spine, just for another two breaths. And tuck the toes and wave back and find a downward dog. Rooting into your strong arms, spreading the shoulders wide and wrapping your upper arms towards each other. Letting the head go and sending the hips high so your knees can be bent here. You're just finding a wake up for the back body. Ujjaya, one more breath. And on the next inhale, bend the knees, lift the heels. Wave yourself forward, come into uh, all fours again. Send the left foot high and exhale as you round. Inhale, send it high through the belly. Exhale, hug it in, use the belly. One more time, big inhale. Exhale. Send that hip for a big circle. Little freeing motion here for the hips. A little lubrication. And then set it down again. Send the other leg up. Exhale round. Inhale, extend. And round. So we're really just starting to warm up the back body, the hips. And feel how we're using our arms. So we're definitely not dumping in your arms here. Nice and strong, bone stacking here. Use your foundation. Good, set the knees back down. Set the hands deliberately downwards. Use your fingertips. Press strong arms down. Lift hips high. And look for this back extension. Hug the belly in. You can have your hips high. Big inhale. Sorry, knees high. Exhale. Heels drop down. Broaden the shoulders. Let the head be heavy. Take two more breaths. Downward dog. Feel into your foundation. Pressing into both hands equally, both pads of your feet are grounded and perhaps the heels are reaching down. Drawing forward into a plank or a half plank, you can choose. Lower yourself down, point the toes and slide the hands to the wrists or under the shoulders. Again, good ground support. Press into the top of the feet and rise up. Wrap the shoulders back and feel into this cobra shape. So in the morning, we might want to feel, take a little time to ease into cobra. Setting it up for another two breaths. Squeezing the elbows in, using your ground support, drawing the hands towards the body and the heart through. Good, exhale, drop down. Slide the hands back, frame the ribs, point the toes, and press up through strong straight arms, inner elbows forward. The knees, you're on your knees here, the pelvis is hovering. So create pressing into the tops of the toes. Use your foundations, press into it, maybe lift the knees if that's your practice. And then exhale, hinge back, hips high. Use thumb and index to support the arms in a balanced way and come back to downward dog. Take two more breaths. Reaching in for a long spine. So if your downward dog does not feel like it's stretching your back, you sit down on your knees and work that stretch from the knees. It's really about honoring the shape, honoring the body, and learning what works for us. So there's always a way to adapt. Good. Slide the left leg high. I'm gonna slide the left leg through between the hands. Plant the back foot down and slowly rise up with a real sense of pressing, trying to stretch the mat. Front foot pressing forward, back foot pulling back. Taking your ribs to face the front, the hips facing front as much as possible. Sink down into these deep rooted legs and rise up if it feels good or just stay down with the downward connection through the legs. So we're really firing up the legs with stretch and power. So it's lengthening and strengthening at the same time. 
If you want to add to it, one more breath, rising up, big inhale. Warrior one. Start to open in the hips. You can adjust the feet if you need to. Everybody's body is different, but we want the hips to be facing the long line of the mat. Rooting the arms out. Try and let the knee reach over the outside edge of the foot. So you're really engaging this leg. So you're using your left hips, your left uh, glute to hug under. Shoulders draw towards each other just a little bit for that firmness. As you reach the hands out, look along the left hand. Feeling that stability, feeling the grounding. One more breath. Maybe lifting toes. Good. Take an inhale as you lift. And we're going to switch the feet round and turn to the right side. So really set that back foot in. Turn the hips to the right side. Bend in your front leg as much as you can. You might even reach forward to feel that ground connection through legs before you rise. The glutes at work. If it feels good, you're taking your arms up or just stay low and feel that spread of the mat. Two directions. Ujjaya breath. The breath control. This helps us to feel space, to create space in the body. We really want to feel this body experience. We do not want to feel all the obstructions and all the, all the struggle and the breath holding. That's this work we want to avoid. Open out to the side. Let the hips square to the long side of the mat. If the knee drops in, that can be common. We need to just reassess how wide our feet might need to be. Perhaps adjust where the back foot is. Generally, heel is in line with the instep. Right toe is facing forward, back toe comes in a little. So send the knee out just a little bit more, gaze along. Right arm, shoulders squeezed back and down, together and down, arms are strong. Empowering posture. Good, inhale as you rise, turn to the left leg, hands down, either side of the foot and exhale into downward dog. Lower yourself into your choice of vinyasa, plank to chaturanga, or use knees. Inhale, upward dog, or cobra. I'm showing you the harder version just now. Exhale, downward dog, set it back. Use those shoulders to really connect the shoulder blades to back. So you're spreading shoulder blades wide and then squeezing the upper arms together by the ears. So a very strong connection through shoulders. Drawing a back stretch. And take the left leg high again. And slide that left leg through. Frame the feet. So here you might want a block. You might want two blocks. You can have them however high. You could have bottles, Tupperware, books. Settle down. Feel the ground. Let the feet press in two directions. Inhale as you arch the spine like a cow. Exhale, hug back, become a little bit more cat-like. We're coming into a little pulse, if you like. Use the breath, straightening the legs, you can bend the back leg. Two more, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, support yourself, you can be higher. You can even use the support, whatever is there. Using my floating side table. Last time. Good. And set the blocks back. Hands either side of the feet and send that leg high. Good. Slide it back through. Ground the back foot, rise all the way up and turn to the other side. So fingertips, you just said bring your blocks with you. Fingertips to ground or on your blocks. Soften the hips. Feel the ground connection, front foot reaches forward, back foot reaches back. Find a softness in the middle. A fluidity. Flesh and bones, but also a nice energetic flow from ground upwards. Try and feel it coming up through this, the core as well, through the core of your body, up towards the head. 
We're working a little bit with Kundalini energy today. It's also the lines of the liver line, which we're trying to work with today. Pulling back, maybe feeling that stretch a little bit deeper, really enjoying whatever you're feeling. And then turn to the long side of your mat. Take a big inhale. And we're gonna bend on alternate sides. So just feeling into, again, the hip space. You can have your blocks here. Your toes can turn out a little bit. Really working into this inner line of the leg and the groin. You dry a breath, finding a fluidity as you move. It's, enjoy that expression of the stretch. Good, turn to face left foot, plant the hands either side of the foot, hug it back. Drop down, find your plank, find your vinyasa, lowering forward onto your belly, perhaps taking a cobra or an up dog, and working yourself back to a downward dog. If downward dog feels too strong, you can always come into a balasana at any time, child's pose, or perhaps just sit on your heels or on your block in hero pose while we're in downward dog. Just a reset. Whenever you're ready, use the arms, set the hips back. Do come into downward dog. And we're going to send the left leg high. Slide it through. Round the back foot and rise all the way up to the long side of the mat. So opening out, maybe a reverse warrior. And feeling that long reach coming in for Parshvakanasana, so do take your block here. Maybe on the inside, or if you're looking for a challenge, on the outside of the foot, keep scooping the left hip under, and really stretch into this long side stretch. How anchored can you make your right foot at the back? Feel like it's pressing down and back. Sink a little deeper, one more breath, relax the neck and shoulders. And inhale as you rise, straighten the leg, maybe a little reverse triangle. I put my block in my hand and we come into triangle here. So I'm going to keep the block here, take whatever support that you need. So we're quite wide in this, so it's quite active for the legs. Keep grounding through this back leg. As much grounding as you can find until you feel that energy lifting up. Feel like you're taking some energy from the earth to help you rise. So finding that balance, what you give out to what you take. So it might feel a little bit unreal, but that sort of direction of travel for your effort, if you like, is what we're trying to do. Bring your block with you. We're going to turn to the other side. So set right foot out. Back foot comes in, still quite wide. Find your warrior two. And float back, reverse warrior. Trying to keep the hips set, decide where you're going to take your block. So you can rest on your thigh, but try to work with a block and work to ground now. So you can really press into the ground. You can have your block or your Tupperware box, however height is right for you. Ground into the left foot and Rotate the belly, the ribs, the chest, if you can, just a little bit to feel for this juicy, juicy stretch. Reach, reach, and feel that ground connection. Ah, super. If you roll the wrist and inhale as you rise, parallel the feet. You might take your block with you, reaching forward, and you might twist open from side to side. So do use the block, it might help to find a slightly more satisfying twist. We don't want to have pain in our back, we want to have the sit bones reaching back, a nice long spine as we twist, waist and thoracic. So you can bend the alternate knees, so you decide what's right for you. Good. Leave the block there, we turn over the left foot, Plant the hands and slide back. 
reaching forward, planting toes, taking a vinyasa if you'd like or just meet us in child pose and then eventually downward dog. Good, slide right leg high first, extend the right leg, you wrap the toes and then slide up the left leg, a little bit more balance there. Reaching forward, feet between hands, plant the knee down, point the back toe. We're going to start to rise up into a lunge, take an inhale here. If it feels good, maybe the hands are down the back. And reaching the elbows up. So we're taking this really nice supported upward reaching back bend. If that's not right for you, do what's right for you. Lower down. Feet connection, one more breath. And then exhale, you might want your block. We're going to hug back into a half Hanumanasana. So you might need to guide your foot forward or back to try and find this setup where we're nice and straight over the back knee. So keeping the trunk nice and long so the energy rises in an unobstructed way. So it doesn't matter how high you are and what you're using to support you. Just feeling this nice stretch, maybe some space between the toes on the left foot. Good, and then we're gonna swivel the right foot round, face the front and ground the left foot. So the whole left foot is really, really grounding. Take an inhale as you rise and exhale as you slide down that active, strong left leg. Good feeling for this side stretch, right side. Good. Bring yourself back. You can use a block, a Tupperware box, a book. Keep grounding into the whole foot and reaching all the way over for this nice side stretch. So what's happening with the shoulders? Try and lock the shoulders, shoulder blades onto the back. Hug the right shoulder blade under and maybe press the pelvis forward towards the front. So it's a gentle kind of back bend as well. Are we still rooting into the left leg? Keep rooting in, feel that grounding. You wrap the wrists and then turn to the right side. Plant the hands and just slide the right foot through. Come onto the back knee. Flatten the foot, use your foundation, press down to rise. If it feels good, the arms are up or just keep them down. Pelvis is drawing forward, but legs are still strong. If it feels nice, the hands drop down and the elbows reach high. Ujjaya, one more breath. And then free that off and very deliberately enjoying the expression in your body. I hope maybe use whatever support you need, blocks, what have you. Level the hips, heel is down and toes are floating. Keep hugging the right hip back as you move perhaps a little deeper into the stretch. So you decide what support you need. Make sure we're stretching the back of the leg in the right places. And two more full breaths, no strain, no hurry. Nice and long in the trunk. Align those chakras. Use the ground. Good, swivel the left leg in and plant the right foot down. Toes pit pointing forward. Take an inhale as you reach up this long side and tip over, don't worry how far you go. Work for the stretch. Relax the shoulders, relax the head down, ear to shoulder. Keep rooting into the back, into the right leg. Ground foundation, really connecting to earth. Feeling that root connection. You can free up the trunk and the upper body. Planting the hand down, using your support as much as you need to. Ground into this foot and reach. Take as big a stretch as you can and maybe start to press the hips forward. Maybe looking downwards. Maybe the fingers are down and the heel of the hand reaches. It's a really nice whole side body stretch. So keep connecting that whole right foot to the ground. Press down. Reach. Good. 
Yeah. And then just wrap the shoulder around as you rise up. Turn to the right side. Hands either side of the foot, tuck the back toe and reach yourself into a downward dog. Pedal the feet. You might extend that right leg high. Maybe bend and straighten. Move yourself into a plank, vinyasa if you would like, or stay, or come down, you choose. So vinyasa is the movement with breath that we take to keep the body nice and mobile, the dynamic element to steady and stimulate at the same time. Moving the left foot forward. Take an inhale, bend, step the back foot in and come into a warrior one again. So here you might take your left arm down. If it's available to you, if it's your practice, if you want to add, you can take archer arms or gomukhasana arms or just sliding hands up the back or maybe you're just staying here beside your practice or maybe you're opening your arms just something to warm up the shoulders a little and then free the arms big inhale we're going to send the right arm forward starting to twist and the left arm back so decide how you can ground yourself twist in the waist Maybe you start to reach the right arm up, feeling more of a back bend. Maybe the left hand comes to the inner thigh of the right leg, you decide. Or maybe you're just here. One more breath. So a nice juicy twist. Take an inhale as you lift the arms and exhale as you lower down onto the back knee. So we're gonna actually slide this back knee in so that we're in an L shape here and an L shape here. And take an inhale as you reach up and twist to the long side of the mat. So you might stay here and really work this twist, or you might start to lengthen your trunk forward and try and hook upper arm to thigh. So only work to what's right for you. We want to be twisting a strong, straight trunk. So the spine needs to be nice and long. We don't want to be one of these funky bonsais that's got weird little trunks that go in all sorts of directions. We want a nice long straight spine. Think bamboo, I think a nice tall straight tree. So keeping that in mind while you notice the flexibility of a tree as well, keeping your roots strong. If it felt good to you, you might have lifted your back leg here. Keep hugging in the left hip and then eventually perhaps drop down. Plant right hand down, lifting the back leg and taking a slightly more open twist. So here you might be moving your back hand even off the mat, swaying back your weight and taking your head into your hands into a little back bend. Or perhaps you're just here in this nice open twist or here. Take one more full breath. Use your foundation. Notice what's on the ground and use it. Press in to reach out away and away. So you root to rise. Awesome, exhale, release that down, hands frame the foot and slide left leg high. Exhale, drop down, slide, slide right leg high. Exhale, vinyasa if you would like. So we come into plank, chaturanga, upward dog or cobra and on our knees. Downward dog, rooting through strong arms and really sending your connection to ground. So you might start to be feeling that your heels are meeting the ground a little bit more or slightly closer to that direction, which can feel very supportive. So use that, keep hugging the belly in. Set the right foot to the center. The left leg comes high again, reaching forward, hands between the feet. So drop onto the back knee. I'm going to just heel toe the left foot out to the side and come into a bit more of a lizard shape. So you might have a towel or a strap nearby. We're going to come into 
a quad stretch. So catch the foot and try and keep drawing the foot in towards the back side without letting the foot drop out. So we want the heel to draw towards the back side. Maybe the upper body twist, but don't let the foot go. If you can't find your foot, use a strap, use a towel. You want to be on the top of, above the kneecap, you might need to pad your knee here. We're taking a quad and a psoas stretch here. If it really doesn't feel good for you, just don't do it. Take the support that you need. Feel two more breaths in this shape. Nice and fluid, easy breath. Moving heel towards backside. And then release whenever you're ready. Keeping our right hand down, lifting onto your back heel. We're going to roll outer edge of front foot, outer edge of back foot, and come to sit on our hip. So our right hip. So we might just lounge here, taking the forearm down, maybe allowing this hip to open. Keep rooting through the right leg. Once you feel a little bit more comfortable, you might start to rise up, shoulder towards ear, and feel this side stretch. If this just isn't working for you with this hip, you can slide the foot down a little, but still work the side stretch here. And when you're ready, we're going to turn forward, float the hands, and send the left leg high. Drop the feet down, vinyasa, exhale, inhale, exhale. Walk the hands back to the feet. Hug in the nose to knee, hips high. And inhale as you rise. And take the right leg forward. Reach. Come back to centre. Take the left leg forward. Reach. Let's back bend. And then turn. Swivel. Just swivel on the feet. And come to facing the left side. Take a big inhale as you reach high and exhale as you fold. Nose to knee. Might even catch your heels. Really experiment with how much of your belly and ribs can reach lengthily towards the thighs. It's not a competition, it's not a fight, just feeling into this lengthening in the body, being that experience. Toes ground, big toe mounds ground. Inhale as you reach forward and up, strong straight leg, straight back, and plant yourself back into downward dog. Right leg high, big inhale, maybe bend, straighten, you choose. And then slide the right leg through, around the back foot, and inhale, reach high. Maybe you're going to take Gomukhasana arms, right arm down, left arm up. If this is easy for you, or if this is an acceptable challenge for you to feel your breath with ease. If that's not easy, there's alternatives. Or perhaps you're just opening and closing your shoulders. Do what feels good to you. Just take one more breath. Really feel the ground connection through the legs. Free the arms. And inhale as you rise. Exhale as you lower down. So we're going to set the back knee down. Set it so it's a double L shape. So it's not as deep a lunge. And either just turn to face the long side of the mat. Turn to face this right leg. And feel this nice twist in the spine or if you want to go a little bit deeper use your legs foundation hug in the thigh keep the spine long so head is still reaching towards the front of your mat if we're curling in our back we are not doing ourselves any favors plus it feels so much more satisfying with a straight spine really nice juicy juicy twist so the more you can get your armpit to thigh the more challenging it is if you want to lift the back knee as well, it becomes a challenge for your balance. And steady breath. One more breath. 
we set the knee, hands either side of the foot, and slide that right leg all the way back, free the leg, maybe open and close if it feels good, plant the feet, way forward, find your plank, chaturanga vinyasa, or just rest, balasana hero, and meet us, back in downward dog. Exploring your downward dog here. Maybe those of you that are practicing your arm balances are on your fingertips. Maybe you're on that turbo dog with bent arms. So if that means nothing to you, don't worry about it. You know who you are. Slide the left foot in, the right foot high. Feet between hands. Let's come into a low lunge. So a lower lunge, a runner's lunge. So again, we can have all these supports here. Maybe bring your supports with you. Deepening down. We're gonna slide left hand into the ground so we can be using a block here. I'm gonna take it all the way off the mat and come into a wider twist. So I'm swaying back a little bit here. It's a really nice feeling for the upper back, a little back bend. Hand into head, head into hand, if that feels good, or just stay where you feel that it's nice for you. So a nice open twist here. The belly's not touching the thigh. Good. Using our foundation, dropping back down. Resetting the left hand to the top corner of the mat, lifting the back knee and rolling onto the outer edge of each leg. So we come into a lounge lizard. Set down those a long leg, keep it nice and active, the toes and feet are active, explore where you are on the ground, use the foundation, so if you're on your forearms, a whole long line of this, on the outer edge of your right foot, so allow this release to happen, maybe start to work slightly more into the side stretch, let the shoulder hug up to the ear and really feeling into this serratus anterior, the ribs, getting a nice stretch here. And then eventually rolling, hands to the ground and lift the right leg high. Maybe bend, maybe straighten. Close to ground, an optional vinyasa if you would like. Always breathing, always connected to ground and feeling each step of the way in your body, a real experience inner earthy experience so we're not anywhere else in our mind the right leg rises and comes back in between the feet so I'm going to step the back leg in hold on to center lift and lengthen and here you might want your block we're coming to a revolved triangle so you can take the block you could even have the wall or the back of a chair here, so you don't need to go deep. It's much nicer to feel the connection to ground through the legs. Hug in this right hip. We're going to start to twist towards the long side of the mat. So if it feels fine for you to do it here, that's fine. If you have more of a practice, you might start to take your Tupperware box or your block to the inner edge of the foot, maybe the hands on the hip or the outer edge of the foot if you want more challenge. So play with this. You want to be here for at least five breaths. Nothing blethering. Let's say that's three. Choose where you're at. Four. Explore the connection to ground and lengthen your spine. Five. Release. Slide the back leg back and free the front leg. Free it off. Plant the toes down, lower down, release, point the toes, rising upwards, cobra, or upward dog, and then downward dog again, Svanasana. Mm -hmm. Moving your toes in just a little bit and really feeling that ground connection. Earthing you, supporting you, allowing you to breathe with ease and feel spacious. You might even be on your child's pose here. 
for a hero pose. Center yourself. Slide the left leg high this time, reaching the left leg, moving the left leg through, grounding the back foot, having your block nearby. So it helps if the feet are not directly behind each other, but slightly set apart hip width. And keep hugging the left hip back so that we have this balance in our pelvis. So the right hip draws forward and the left hip draws back. The pelvis is nice and balanced. The length in our spine, take whatever support you need before you twist. Feel the ground connection and feel a softness through your joints. So we're definitely not fighting with the joints and feeling like we've got nowhere to go. So lots of buoyancy in the joints. It really helps. You'll be surprised. The knees, the elbows, keep them soft. So the limbs are straight, but the joints are soft. One more breath. Use the ground to root to rise. Press down to rise up. And then release. Plant the hands down. Reaching yourself back into your downward dog. One last vinyasa. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, reach up. Setting yourself all the way into your last downward dog and really feel the satisfying stretch. Perhaps you're reaching for ankle. Maybe you're floating your hand between the feet. Testing your stability. So only if you feel stable. If it feels uncompromising for the shoulders, don't do it. Dropping downwards. Setting yourself onto your knees and coming into a balasana, child's pose. Just give the shoulders, the, the wrists a little rest here, perhaps just setting your hands behind you. And feeling some weight on your sacrum just to help that grounding support. Again, use whatever support you need, forehead can be on a block. As you reach the sit bones back. Inhale as you rise up, tuck the toes. Now if you feel nice and warm in the body and a little bit more elastic, and set the toes downwards. You might sit here for a, a few breaths and really feel connected to ground. Just realise if we do a quad stretch, I think we did on both sides. Mm. I have a feeling we might not have. I'm just going to double, double it out, set the right foot forward before we go into, we're going to go into camel and reach for the left foot. Just because I have a feeling we didn't do it on this side. So again, you can use your strap or your towel and it's important to make sure that we do balance out the body so we can turn the shoulders we want to try and keep this leg drawing into the center line to get that nice quad stretch that we're looking for so set up wherever is right for you i'm going to take at least six breaths here so that was maybe three four Really satisfying stretch wherever you are with it, whether you've got your thing here or not. And then free that off, tuck the back toe. We're just going to slide back onto our knees. Our body will be grateful for that when we go into our camel. We'll root down through the toes. The toes are really connected to ground. The knees are connected to ground. Slide the hands to the low back. Set yourself hip width and push the hips forward. You're going to be palming the tailbone downwards. Pelvis draws forward, tailbone down, and start to lift the low belly, the ribs, and the chest as you root back with the shoulders. So if it feels good, the head can drop back. We'll keep the chin towards chest if it feels compromised. 
So making sure you can breathe here with still an engagement in the bandha. So you're still zipping up the core, but trying to free the breath. Take one more. Good, exhale, reach forward and down. Point to the toes and inhale as you rise. Press into the toes, press into the lower back. Strong, open connection. Keep rolling the shoulders open. Pressing into those feet. And then exhale as you lower down. So now choosing for yourself if you feel more comfortable on your toes or on the tops of your feet. I'm going to do one more. So I'm going to take the hands to the chest. Moving yourself up so you're sliding the pelvis under and forward. Tailbone under, pelvis forward. And find what's right for you where you can still breathe. So there's a strong trunk, energy rising up and an expression of space through breath. So if you cannot breathe with ease here, come out of the depth of your shape, but still explore the upward lifting motion, engaging the back body. So perhaps you still have to have a support. Good. Release. Draw yourself down. Come onto your belly and just take a moment on your belly. I'm going to do Shalambhasana, a strengthener for the back. You can take the shoulders back, the elbows back, lift the feet, draw the belly in. So whatever is on the ground now, connect to the ground, spread the hips, the belly and the ribs onto the ground and breathe. Squeezing the shoulders back, maybe reaching the hands back, drawing the thighs towards each other. One more breath. And free yourself down. Just take a little moment here, head to one side. Breathe to ground support. Really feeling this expression in the body, a real body experience here. Engage your back body, squeeze the thighs towards each other. You might even interlace the hands if that's there for you. Open the chest. Really explore this awesome opening here. Two more steady breaths. Be in the body. And then slide the hands under the ribs, by, beside the ribs. Point the toes and rise up for upward dog. And then draw yourself back. Lengthening the spine and twisting yourself round onto your back. Drawing the low back to ground, then mid back, then upper back, hug in the knees. Good. You might just give your hips a little bit of a lubrication. Before you set the heels down, so we want the feet to be very grounded. Heels, pads of the feet and toes. Hip width or maybe even a little bit more. Rooting down through the upper arms and reaching up into Setu Bandhasana. Maybe the hands come to ground. Root down with what you're Grounding with to press up. So we're in a bridge pose. So again, use this whole front body line to stretch. As you feel that ground connection, pressing down to rise up. Thighs roll towards each other, one more breath. Lowering down with ease and really take support of the ground here. So for those of you that practice wheel, a deeper back bend, and an arm balance to an extent as well. Thumbs by your ears, hands towards ground. Keep the feet set. If you're not practicing wheel, come up in one full breath. If you're not practicing wheel, come back into bridge pose. If you're in wheel, try and stay for five fluid, easy breaths. Use the arms to send the ground away. Connect, kiss the feet to the earth. Draw that energy line upwards. Lower down whenever you're ready. If you're in bridge pose, use the same connection. Maybe you're drawing your arms underneath you. Five slow and easy breaths, always breathing. 
before you lower down and just let the whole spine reset. Feel the ground. Arms release by your side. Feet really wide, as wide as the mat. Just let the knees roll from side to side. So feel here whatever is nice and juicy. Adjust your feet if you need to. If any tweaks in the back, then try and adjust the legs or don't go too deep. With the knees and feet quite wide, next time you drop onto your left side, just have a little look to see if your left knee is in line with your hip. Make it so. And just hang out here for a few breaths. Try and keep the shoulders grounded. You might be on your left ear. You might pick up, or your right ear, you might pick up your foot. Just to place a little bit more sense of drawing down to ground. It's a really nice internal rotation, a stretch for the hip, line the psoas, and of course, our energy lines for spring. Deepening the breath. You might adjust that out whenever you're ready or stay there for longer, you decide. Bring it over to the other side, make sure knees in line with hip and just explore this side. See how this feels in your hips and your side body. And find a full expression of breath. So if we still are practicing breathing with ease, it really helps to relax the stomach and make sure you can feel the movement of each breath. Really explore and move the whole lower abdominal cavity, abdominal cavity. Not just the chest, not just the ribs. Maybe you're picking up the foot and weighing it down just gently. It's very satisfying if you allow it to be. So to soften the body. Imagine you are, perhaps you are in your garden, just touching the earth with your hands, feet. It's taking that exchange of energy that comes from the natural space around us. You might free the feet. Bring yourself into a more centered place. And catch the behind the left leg and just take a gentle stretch through the hamstrings. Maybe feeling into that space for yourself, drawing your hands through the back leg. How hard or soft is that? Try and soften it. Reaching up towards wherever is available to you and taking a little glide up wherever is right. If the knee is bent, that's just fine. Maybe just glide that leg out, catching behind the knee. Maybe a happy baby, drawing the knee in. Maybe just a little bounce through the foot, extending feeling how that feels for you. Maybe taking a little moment to side length and bringing it back to center. Other leg goes up. You just feel into the hamstrings, maybe bend and straighten a little. Keeping the spine nice and long, just resetting the spine so the trunk is supported, reaching up to wherever is available to you. Maybe you feel particularly tight. Maybe you feel quite loose here. Feel the whole back segment of the legs. Experience what that feels like. Try and create and imagine it to be a little softer. Draw it inwards. And then maybe move the knee out. A happy baby drawing behind the knees. Sort of modified happy baby. And you might bend and straighten the leg here. Explore an external movement, a stretch here, maybe reach through the toes if that feels good. And then draw yourself back, feet together, knees apart. So here you might even be using your blanket or a cushion. You might support your back here and take a little bit more of a back bend. Maybe your top of our top is behind your head. Maybe your arms are for sure nice and heavy. So choose where you want to be. We're going to relax for a few moments there. Feet together, knees apart. Just feel yourself. 
very much supported by ground. Relaxing your jaw, softening your eyes, your face. Allowing the whole experience in your body be felt, absorbed. Supported, but spacious. Really honouring our physical body in this month to come with this lunar cycle that we're in and with the, the peak of spring. So we have the greenest of trees. With all that extra oxygen going into the air, we really should be breathing really deeply. And we should be feeling like we want to breathe. Breathe in that oxygenated air. Appreciate all that new green life on the trees. Be part of nature. So now we might start to be feeling as we really tune inwards to our physical expressions and how we feel in our body and where our obstacles are. We might be feeling like we want to cleanse. So spring cleaning our home, yes, but spring cleaning our body perhaps more so. So you might want to think about that. Maybe a juice cleanse, a liver cleanse, up to you. And as you relax, release there, just stay for as long as you want. Um, I'll just remind you there's going to be some workshops to help you to deepen your practice. One on Monday, I think, and one on Friday next week. The next live class will be on Wednesday. So there'll just be one live class next week. I'll put reminders up for that. We really want to be deepening our awareness in our practice and starting to make more of a routine that works for you. If you stay as long as you want in relaxation, maybe your legs have gone long, I'm gonna to say to you, it's been lovely to yoga with you. Happy Friday, keep those good vibrations going. Namaste. Oh.